Hi, I'm Morris Parker, and welcome to Race 4 of the Powerade Super Skiff Series, coming to you from Sydney Harbour. Let's look at today's fleet lineup. Of course, last week's winner, Lexmark, and other favourites, Pace Express, 2UE Barracuda, and Richard Ellis. New boat, of course, skilled contract labour, and watch out for World Exchange. Tony, race four of the series, how do you see today's racing? I might just sit on my laurels and stay with the three I've got. Actually, skilled engineering's coming in today, and the skilled boat will sail well. Uh, it's its first race with the club, and it, it should come on well. Uh, Foster's showing a bit of form, I think. Mitsubishi, the boys behind us, they're showing a bit of form. A few more boys coming out of the pace. Here's today's weather. A freshening breeze from the southeast. Wind 10 to 12 knots, gusting up to 16, and all skippers have chosen small rigs. What would an 18 footer be without its wings? They add an exciting element in the quest for maximum speed and are a surprisingly recent development. Prior to the wings being introduced, crews just hung onto the boat as best they could. Wings are a wonderful story. Richard Court, the current Premier of Western Australia, was a great enthusiast in the 18 footers, uh, back probably in around about the mid 70s, if my memory serves me right. And it was he that came up with the concept of the wings. And he just plonked some aluminium sections along the sides of the boats. It was a fairly obvious thing that everyone had overlooked. But by increasing the width of the boat, you obviously increased your loadings and your stability. Wings began appearing on every boat, giving the crew more leverage and allowing an increase in the wind to sail ratio. In a stiff breeze, the 18s often become airborne. At one stage, the 18 foot long boat carried wings which made it over 26 feet wide. But eventually, new rules were made and the maximum width was limited to 14 feet. Even with their wings, these boats are extremely difficult to handle. A beautiful day down here at Double Bay for race four of the Powerade Super Skiff Series. Welcome back to the Powerade Super Skiff Series. Crews there preparing for race four. Tony, what a great day. Wonderful day again, Morris. Looking forward to the racing. There's line seven. Gee, I hope she has a better day than she had last week. Very unlucky. She had third place sewing up last week. Coming to the line, broke the gear, took the boat down. Pretty disappointing for them. I hope they have a better day. Let's go for the course, shall we, Tony? Well, as again, we've got our start and uh, working to windward. And out round the jive mark, back around the bottom, up the wind again, to set up and then home to the finish. Tony, about what, 30, 40 seconds to the start, I'd say? Jockeying up now, Morris. Bang, there, they're racing, they're off. I should have said two seconds there, Tony. You caught me by surprise. Good start, Graham Turner, AFS. He's got his uh, old sheet hand back, Richard Imlay, or Baldy as they <laughs> affectionately call him. He's a great sheet hand and uh, he's making the boat foot through the water a lot better there today. AI pace, not such a good start, but uh, I like Graham's start, to you in the pack. This start seems to be a lot more equal, Tony. Well, they'll break, they'll break to different sides of the courses today. It's very dead dead work to windward. Some of the boats will run the port the hand side of the course and others to the starboard. And uh, that's the shot of Graham again, streeting them off the line. Line 7 going well too. Conditions for a change very choppy out there, Tony. A lot more breeze than we've seen in the first three heats. Good strong south southeast of today. Um, it'll test them out. A lot of the boats have come out with big gear. I think they've made a mistake. Tony, as you mentioned before, the actual fleet will pretty much split up, won't they? Play a lot of tactics now. If you've made a bad start, try to break and, and sail away from the bulk of the fleet and look for clean and better air uh, on the other side of the course. So uh, in that shot, we're seeing the boats that are working towards the steel steel point side of the course. But behind us, some of them are going out towards Clark Island, hopeful to get a lift or a shift in the breeze that will give them an advantage to uh, help them for their poor start. Tony, if you are out there right now, what would you be doing? Oh, I'd like to be doing what Graham Turner's doing. I'd like to be just sailing nice and smooth and fun. Thanks, Morris. Best place to be. 
Well, a good start, given this sort of license, as we've said, so often, so often, so important. A lot of congestion out there today as well, Tony. Well, a wonderful day, and this, uh, we go to one out of Wallowa Sailing Club today, and the little boat's out here in, uh, I think, the state championships today, so they'll be mixing and <laughs> mingling around with the 18s. They're getting very close to the shoreline this time. This is the first time we've seen this happen, isn't it, Tony? Again, you can work the shoreline looking for good lift, hoping you get a slant of breeze that, that helps pull you up towards the windward mark. Next mark, of course, getting in close will ask for, for water, and AFS will have to come back. I'll tell you what, the crew of Lexmark must be very happy. They had a good win last weekend. Well, they sailed very well last weekend, and again, they're going pretty well today. And they're in a pretty handy spot in this race, I'd say, two miles. You know, it's funny, you see all those little boats in the background there, but they're the sort of boats that most of these men have learnt and learnt their skills in to come to the 18s. And as I've said before, so often these boys have sailed every weekend, probably for most of their lives, since our young men of eight and nine, or young boys, I should say, of eight or nine years of age. And of course, Sydney Harbour, a very popular place to be on a weekend. Wonderful waterway, Miles. Line 7 there on screen. Well, fortunately, so far, no breakages, and I'm sure the lads will be a lot happier there and a pretty handy slot today, too. Line 7 also following the shoreline there. There's a new boat we just saw in the background under Line 7, the skilled boat in today. First time in the big time, and uh, looking for things from them, but it's early days from them. First race today. You think in a case like theirs, Tony, a lot of first race nerves for skill? Well, probably not sure of the competition. Dropping into this class is pretty difficult and uh, coming into the big time's awkward. AFS sailing very nicely there. Look at my old mate Richard, working the sheet, pulling the boat up. Big job, you know, you never stop working the sheet in the middle and uh, good sheet hand can really help you to win, would really pull you up the breeze. It really does get confusing now, as you said, with, with the fleet split up into, into two packs, it's hard to know who's really in the lead until we get to that first mark. Well, that's right. It's, it's, it's a windward beat, and that's what it's all about. The tactics of sailing to windward is uh, pretty critical, and uh, people have got to look for the lifts and the knocks. Another strong performer there, of course, is Richard Ellis, who uh, has performed very well in the last uh, three races. Very consistent, Richard Ellis. He's been working his way through this series the whole time consistently. Not trying to be flashy, not trying to do anything out, out of the ordinary, and just sailing all the time for the money. And uh, he's, he's got the big rig on today, and he should be punished for that, but he's making a job of it with the big rig. Hang the big washing up when it gets over 20 knots. There's no job for Dill, let me tell you. I can imagine. Well, yeah, I'd want to be out with a small one up, Morris. <laughs> This is my first year in the 18 steering. I have sailed 18s in the past as a crew, but uh, if we're behind, I think uh, with our, our winter program where we've been out and practiced and done a bit of tuning, I think we'll have the boat speed to get back through the fleet anyway. Tony Hand there, skipper of Line 7. Nice bloke, Tony. Great, great fella. As I've said, keen competitor. There's his skiff there, Line 7. Yeah, nice round up, and now, now we're going for the set. Graham Turner coming in behind in the Australian Faith Services for the set. Richard Ellis, Trevor in the TUE Barracuda, Johnny winning in the Yandu. There's the light ice. Great looking boat, that light ice, isn't it? Fantastic. Lex Mark, looking a handy spot today. Was in the World Exchange? World Exchange has been fairly quiet in the last two races. Had a great first race, but hasn't done so well since. He's been out of the money, but I bet he'll be trying again to get in today. Line seven's got away nicely, hasn't he, Miles? Sure has. Next mark a nice set as well. Graham Turner on the Australian Faith Services, third boat around the top. He'll be happy with that. Going Nick, around the first mark. Nick Rich there working the sheet on the line seven. Heading out to the jive mark. Followed by Lex Mark. Graham Turner, Australian Faith Services. This first mark was a real toughie though, Tony, wasn't it? Pretty important to get up there, that windward mark first. We'll be in the first two or three boats. It'll be pretty close all day today. But good fresh breeze. You can see the boats there. Really got a head of speed up, hasn't she there? She is travelling 20, 25 knots on line seven. There's the Yandu behind, Johnny winning. Johnny, as you may be aware or not, Morris, was uh, five times runner up to the uh, world famous Ian Murray and uh, in the world uh, 18 foot skiff championships. Seven times, I think, Australian BS champion. He's got a good track record, obviously, out to prove himself in this series. Coming back to try and win the Power 8 series, and I'm sure he wants to go on and put
put that world championship on his mantle. Boys on the AFS doing a bit of a balancing job at the boat in front. Nice shot of the skill footing well there. I think Skill's performing very well for its first race. Going great guns for the first race, boys. He's in about seventh or eighth place out here in the big time. Yandu coming up to Jard. Richard Ellis won't be far. Oh, Yandu, the big gear, hard to jive when it's a little fresh. But uh, they'll make a job of the big gear. It's not that hard today. They'll get around. AFS, of course, sails straight over the top of him with the smaller gear, as tooted uh, the TUE Barracuda, Trevor Barnabas, Bevan and uh, his, his son Trent. The skippers had a choice in this race, I think, between uh, the big and small rigs, didn't they? Marginal sort of day. It's half and half. I think, this, I think I'd, I, as I've said, I think you'd be more comfortable with the small rig, but the boys that are handling the big rig, the good crews will handle the big rig just as well. Tony, why is it difficult to handle a big rig in these conditions? Well, Morris, the boats are built with two rigs today. We only allow them to have two rigs, the big mast being 34 foot approximately high and the smaller mast being about 31 foot. So obviously, with the bigger mast, the sail size of the boat is bigger. The spinnaker, as we can see on AFS, is bigger. So as the wind freshens, you want to have the smaller sails, and in the lighter airs, you want to have the bigger sails. And really, the optimum is about the wind range today. We've got about 17 knots, and that's really where the big rig starts to become a problem, and you need to be in the middle rig. There's a nice shot of all the boats coming down. Line 7 there on screen there. He's in a handy spot today, Morris. Lexmark having just gone through the jibe, as Yandu has above him. Yandu, as I've said, making a good job with the big gear, you see. It's just that marginal time between whether you'd have your 34-foot mast or your 32-foot mast. Once again, it really is down to crew tactics, isn't it? Well, they pick these rigs on the, on, on the shoreline and they've got the choice and it's, uh, they've got to look at the breeze and just judge with, and consider whether it's going to get fresher or lighten off. And of course, if you think it's going to lighten up, you go with the bigger rig, and if you think it's going to freshen, you'd go with the smaller rig. Tony, you mentioned that you would have gone for the smaller rig. I would have gone for the smaller rig because, uh, usually from the south, it will tend to strengthen rather than weaken, I think. And, but, you know, you've got to be a bit of a weatherman. There's the world exchange with the small rig. Smaller mainsail, smaller jib, smaller spinnaker, smaller mast. Takes the big wind better. World Exchange is doing very well, and of course, Lexmark currently in the lead in race four of the Powerade Super Skiffs series. Welcome back to race four of the Powerade Super Skiff Series and the fleet heading towards the leeward mark. Running in to get the gear off. Uh, poor old Ben Derwin has come off the top of the mast there on the Mitsubishi. I don't think he was expecting that to happen, but uh, as I've said often, Mo, it's difficult to get the gear down and it's important to get it down, get it cleaned up in the spinnaker bag, round the leeward mark, have your three men out in the trapeze and sail away nice and clean, which is going to happen with line seven now. Once again, Line 7 performing extremely well. Having a very good race today, Tony Han. TUE has popped his spinning pole. Look, there's Johnny winning again with the big gear, and he's uh, got, got around very nicely there, and, and got his gear on, and he's sailing away, and he's, he's well to windward of the Lexmark that's dropping down. Going around the marks, Tony, often a lot of congestion as we just saw then. Boats are close together and, uh, you know, just a few seconds between them and uh, they've all got around at the same time, so that's right, always going to be congested at the marks when you've got a top-line fleet of sailors like in the Power 8 Skiff Series. Well, there's our current leaders there, Lexmark. Well, I think Line 7 probably still got him, although uh, not much in it there. Once again, a very close race. Of course, Lexmark winning race three last weekend of the series. Yeah, lucky, lucky Lexmark last week on the light airs did a great job. AFS sailing particularly well, as I've said again. Got the sheet hand back in the boat, got the man that can pull the boat to windward. Look at them nicely, nicely bunched up there on the wings. 
I would say this would be the best performance by AFS so far in the series. Well, he was sailing earlier in the earlier races with the fill-in sheet hand. It makes a big difference. Three men working in tandem, all got to understand each other. Put one other bloke in and it takes a long time to settle down. Actually, this could be really anybody's race at the moment. Wide open. Wide open race. Don't worry about it. Go ahead and go out. Go out. Now that's putting you right into the hot seat. Well, that was a pretty ordinary stay or go about or, uh, from uh, Stephen McConaughey. I mean, he's uh, new in the boats and we all know that he's a great sailor and he's got a great crew, but got a way to go when you watch him stay like that. Got to get the boats through the, through the wind. In other words, change direction to windward very quickly without losing speed, out on the trapeze and going again. His sheet hand left the sheet behind. Gee, AFS looking good there. Nice, nicely sailing, nicely sailing. On screen there, line seven. Well, what's that? We're back at AFS now. Fantastic, all the guys out there on the wing. That is spectacular. Well, you can see, as I've said, they're nicely bunched together, shoulder to shoulder, working in tandem. You can see John o looking for the lifts, looking for the bees up the bow. He'd probably be calling it. Take her up, take her down. Graham, very sensitive with the tiller in his hand, trying to feel it. There's nothing worse than a bad start in this kind of racing. Rod Waterhouse, skipper of Hogs Breath Cafe, talks about strategies. Usually, if you're behind at the start, you tend to go a little bit harder than you should. And uh, it, when it's catch-up, it gets dangerous. But basically, push a little bit harder, try to get the boat going a little bit quicker and uh, maybe um, do the opposite thing what, to what the leaders do. Tony, have a look at that. Look at Jinder Lee. What seems to have gone wrong there? Oh, well, he's popped the top of his mast. His day's over. Paul Bennett, they come down each week from Newcastle. Pretty keen. Good uh, ex skip sailors from the 16s and he'll be disappointed. Tony, what would have happened there? Well, he, I, I'm not sure. Obviously, he's broken his mask. For what reason, I don't know. Not a good day. Into oh, the drink they go. Oh, that's our oh, poor. Come on, boys. Now, that, that, that's really adding injury to your insult. Look at that. Having a swim as well. Back on board, Aspie now. Johnny winning, still keeping the big washing going. Good race here between Lexmark Line 7 and uh, Graham Turner and the Australian Freight Services, but Lexmark nosing ahead. There's a shot of the boys on the uh, Aspie boat. You can see the uh, sheet hand looking around, working the sheet in his hand, watching the breeze up, upwind all the time, looking ahead, watching the other boats and watching for the breeze. Graham Turner climbing me out there, uh, Morris, above Lexmark, I thought, from that shot. Lexmark still currently, we believe, in the lead. There's well exchanged on screen there. Not having a great day out there today. No, it wasn't not having his best day. Skill coming in well. They're sailing pretty well, as we've said. First time in the big time and uh, making a fair fist of it, I'd say. You can see again the sheet hand pulling the sheet, working the sheet all the time. To windward, it's a, it's, a, it's a real combination between the sheet and the skipper. Skipper working the tiller, sheet hand working the, the sheet, trying to pull the boat through the water all the time to the windward mark. It's, 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 a, it's a very serious thing between these two people, and, the, and they really have to have a good understanding of each other. Skill performing very well. Richard Ellis there in the background. Well, Skill's pulling himself well above Richard Ellis. Both boats, I think, carrying the big gear. Once again, some of the fleet heading towards the shoreline there again, Tony. Yes, working back in towards Steel Point near Nelson's Park and on, on our harbour and probably looking for a lift off the shoreline. Another great shot seeing the crew out there on the wing, Mitsubishi Electric there. Well, there again, you've a good shot of the sheet hand working away on that sheet. Look at him, you can see him pulling away on it, Mark. I can never get over how important communication is in this kind of sailing. As I've said so often, Morris, you've really got to have an understanding of the, of, of, of the three people, a really um, serious thing together. Now, what's happening out there? You've got Lexmark and Line 7. They're nearly on the beach. Well, li Line 7's really taking the punt that he'll get a lift off the, off the, off the land mass. Lexmark coming back away from it. Line 7's just about to go about, I'd say. Into our, towards, I guess, the final mark. Around the final mark, then it's all important, that set-up of the spinnaker and running home for a fast finish. There's our leader there, Lexmark. Lexmark sailing very well, so flat, you see, Morris. Once the boats have any tip or angle, they're dragging and they're not nearly as quick, so 
You've got to work that sheet until it'll keep it dead flat. Uh-oh, what's happened here? Bingo, big crash. Shade Sales has run straight into the uh, World Exchange. Another finished bad day for the Wazza. And, of course, the uh, Sales Shades. There's a good chance here now that Lexmark may take out race four, give them two in a row, a commanding position. Well, they're looking uh, pretty safe there. They've got a pretty good lead and they've worked very well. And, and it's just, as I've said, a matter now of getting that good set and uh, getting away and, and running free and fast to the finish. But again, you see nicely bulked up together, shoulder to shoulder, working in tandem, the three men, sheet hand and the skipper. So important to windward. Coming back out now towards uh, Clark Island, from which they'll go about and be on course then for a nice uh, rounding of the windward mark. Next mark now in a commanding position. AFS still in there. Oh, done a great job today, Graham. Done a great job. Carrying the head cam. Always a little difficult sailing with that jolly head cam on your, your, your neck as well. I, I think you'd finish up with a pretty sore neck. I think you might need a chiropractor after this kind of oh, racing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think you'll be going straight in for a bit of ma massage and therapy somewhere. As too will uh, Greg here. He's also got the other head cam on. Well, he's probably, you know, got to do it and... Uh, they give us some very good pictures while we're out there. Put us actually on board these 18-foot skiffs. She's footing through the water there, Lex Mark. It's going to windward, you know, the nose sitting nicely, just cutting. Off a breeze, you want the nose out, but to windward, it's nice to keep that nose in, and you don't want the boat sitting two nose out. Round what? he goes, rounding now, rounding, rounding. Very difficult. In for the set. Gee, line 7's flying there. Line 7 coming up to go around also. He's the gear now, boys. In for the stay. Good, good stay there, line seven, and pull it, get it away, and get it sailing in the gear up. No, he's locked her up. Oh. Now, Tony, Tony, what's hey, happened? What, that always happens to me. I was Graham sailing under him now. Tony, what's happened there? Doing so well, then bang, stalled. Well, he just hasn't got his boat away quick enough and got the gear off. I don't know exactly what's happened, but the secret of it is, rounding the marks, keep your speed, keep smooth, keep the boat moving. Can't stall. Line seven's lost its second position now, due to that, and looks as if AFS may be in the second spot now, behind Lexmark. Well, he got in there well and had a good set, Graham Turner, into second spot at the moment. That's it, but it'll be a tight finish, I'd say. Skilled and Richard Ellis going around the final mark in this race. Yeah, I'd say Richard Ellis and Skilled will be running down for the uh, fourth place. There's Richard Ellis rounding now. See, keeping the boat moving, keeping the boat coming, moving, 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 now in for the set. He's lugging the big gear too, and it's hard when the, the, you have the big washing up in 17 knots. This is pretty much the optimum for 17. 17 knots is the optimum level. He's done a good job getting around the big gear. Lexmark currently in the lead of race four of the Powerade Super Skip Series. We'll be back in just a moment with the finish. Welcome back to the closing stages of race four of the Powerade Super Skiff Series. And Tony, next mark, looking very strong. Oops! Uh-oh, uh -oh, what's happened there? I think Skill took a bath, took it down. Boys on Skill have uh, finished their turn in this race, I'd say. And they were doing so well, Tony, as you mentioned. You're doing a great job for the first time in. Our race leader, of course, is Lex Mark, and there's our rack on screen. Been very quiet this race, Tony. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Rack. I think he's got the big washing up too, and he might be struggling a bit with it, but uh, he's still in the race. I don't know. He's back in eighth or ninth place, I'd say. There she is, our, our lead skiff, Lexmark there, taking it all the way home. Yeah, a lot of concentration there between the men working home to the finish. They don't want to lose from here. They don't want to do a skill. <laughs> they really have finished. That's the yeah, end that of the day's that's racing. That's it for skill. They'll be back. They'll be back and a lot better for the experience. Next mark now for commanding lead. Of course, they did win race three from last weekend. So, two in a row. Not bad going. No, they've done a great job. Look at Lex Mark's bow there. Well out of the water. Planing well, running well. Altogether different from working the boats to the wind. There is Lex Mark's taken race four. So, let's go and have a chat to Greg Patterson, the skipper. And I'm sure he's going to be very happy. 
Congratulations, that's actually race one. Um, just tried to get a good start and um, just go from there. We, we end up you know, pretty good around the first mark and just both going like a rocket. Um, just got to stay on it. It's going too quick. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Looks good. Oh. Tony, second place. You happy with that? Big improvement on last week. Like the pressure breezes. Tony Hannon there, skipper of line seven. Here are the results. Lexmark in first position, second, line seven, and third, AFS, who had a great day sailing. Had a good race today in race four, though. Yeah, yeah, um, got a good start and sort of, you know, went from there. It was, just, it was still a really close race. We got to the finish and, like, you know, hearts were going 100 miles an hour. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a good race. Yeah, real close. Let's have a look at the points table. On top, Richard Ellis with 30 points, followed by Pace Express, Lexmark, Mitsubishi Electric and 2UE Barracuda. Good to see a few of the uh, other skiffs getting on the leaderboard. Well done, Hogs Breath Cafe and Foster's Light Ice. Hope you enjoyed today's sailing and we look forward to seeing you next week for Race 5 of the Powerade Super Skiff Series.